For me, there's something charming about a little grit in urban life, those time-worn buildings that reflect a little permanence in a city that has relentlessly torn itself down and built itself back up over the past half-century. To celebrate these vibrant snapshots of Seoul's not-too-distant past, this show is the first in a series I'm calling Seoul's Best Grit. And to kick things off, we'll visit one of the Taldungne, or moon villages, that emerged on Seoul hillsides in Korea's post-war years. These shanty towns were named for their proximity to, and unobstructed views of, the moon. Over decades, these improvised accommodations evolved into permanent housing for countless families. Due to their typically inconvenient location, away from public transportation and on hilly terrain, only recently have these neighborhoods attracted the attention of real estate speculators. One such moon village is Ihua Dong on the western slope of Mount Naksan. With sweeping views of downtown Jungno and Mount Namsan and located just a short walk from the vibrant Dehangno neighborhood, Ihua Dong would seem like an ideal home. But the area's crumbling concrete staircases and makeshift homes draped in tarpaulins are telltale signs of poverty. What separates Ihua Dong from most Daldongne, however, is art. In 2006, the Ministry of Culture, Sports, and Tourism brought its Art in City project to the neighborhood. Dozens of artists partnered with local residents to paint about 60 murals, signs, and other art installations on walls, underneath bridges, and on staircases. Today, this mix of whimsical art and hardscrabble living has turned the village into a popular destination for youngsters. Included among my favorite art installations is a portrait of two young tailors that covers the entire end of a building that's located at a busy intersection. With its eye-catching blue background and the steady gaze of the tailors beside their sewing machine, it's a nod to the textiles industry that still flourishes here and in nearby Dongdaemun. Most of the other murals and other installations aren't as prominently placed. In fact, part of the fun of spelunking around Ihua Dong is to see what you have in a pond. For example, electricity boxes have been painted to resemble ladybirds, while another tiny piece depicts two smiling boys brandishing rifles. Not far away, I turned the corner and found a frowning bear and rabbit holding heart-shaped balloons. But without a doubt, the favorite photo op is the long, drab staircase that's been painted with about a dozen colorful daisies. A hint to its popularity, a sign reminds visitors to be courteous of area residents, but from what I could tell, the locals didn't seem phased by the trickle of curious camera-toting strangers. Of course, Iwadong's murals are a work in progress. Inevitably, time and the very occasional graffiti takes its toll. I was glad to see that several murals were dated 2010 and 2011, so the project appears to be ongoing, and why not, given the attention paid by the teens and twenty-somethings who wind their way up through the alleys to photograph themselves beside the murals. I imagine that before their visit, many of them didn't know a lot about either the hardships or charms of Seoul's remaining moon villages, but let's hope that the Ihua mural project can make them both more real. That's it for this week's edition of Soul Scene. You can follow me on Twitter at Discover Korea. Thanks for watching. I'm Matt Kelly.